what is the new covenant? Let's take a look. Now, if we're going to understand the new covenant, there's a couple of things that would probably just be helpful for you. In the Bible, there is all sorts of parts to a covenant. Now, I'm not going to go through all of them, but here's some biggies. Uh, there's another video I do. Um, I'll put a little card up here on Hebrews chapter 8, verse 13, and that'd be a good one to watch. But the bottom line for our purposes is that a covenant is actually the uh, agreement between two parties. And so they have like this contract that they agree to, but then this is the covenant. Now, a lot of times in the Bible, and rightly so, we refer to the covenant as this thing. So we look, when we talk about the Torah, the law, we always think in terms of this, but really what we should be thinking in terms of this, you see the difference there? So let's just say a man and a woman, man, woman, they get married, and then you have the vows here. If the man cheats, that doesn't mean that the vows are bad, but if they were to renew the covenant or have a new covenant, like let's just say they like fell in love again and they wanted to make things right, you know, they might very well go back and do these same vows because those were always valid. Now, there's this kind of like prophetic um, typology in the book of Exodus that I think would also be helpful for you. So, now, this is a little squishy. I'm just going to say it right up front is that the timeline in Exodus is a little bit, you know, squishy sometimes. And the reason I say that is because it's evident that the Israelites agreed to the terms of the contract with Yahweh, but then it doesn't seem like they have actually been presented the covenant terms yet. So I'll just leave that there. If you read through Exodus carefully, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. But let's just table that for a moment. The Israelites have no doubt come out of Egypt and they've said, yes, we want to be in a covenant with this God. So Moses goes up the mountain. He gets the commandments as a, as a representation of all of the covenant. But, you know, let's just call it the Ten Commandments for now. He goes up, gets them, comes back down. And what do you know? They're already cheating on God. They've got this golden calf going, going on, you know, not good. And so what does Moses do? he breaks the tablets as a way of saying this covenant is broken. Now, God gets really mad, so mad he kind of wants to kill him and Moses intercedes. And because of the intercessor, well, Yahweh has like this change of heart. Moses is appealed to Yahweh's um, unending compassion and his, his love for these people and your great name. And Yahweh relents. And so what Yahweh does is he relents and Moses goes back up the hill and he gets a brand new set of docks representing a new covenant or a renewed covenant. And then, you know, it goes on from there in the book of Exodus. But here's the deal. Can you see it? There was the first covenant and the second covenant, the old covenant and the new covenant. The terms are exactly the same. But what is really the difference is the act of an intercessor coming before Yahweh saying, because of your great name. And this is exactly what Jesus does. Jesus is an intercessor. Yeshua, an intercessor, goes to the Father, puts down his, lays down his own life. And because of God's great compassion and Jesus' act, you know, wow. So that's going on. Here's another important concept. If I were to ask you, when were the Israelites saved? Would it be when the death angel passed over their houses and the blood was put on the door frames of their, of the, of their houses? Or would it be a few days later or a week later, somewhere around there, when they're standing at the edge of the Red Sea, Pharaoh's in hot pursuit, the Israelites are getting a little freaked out, and Yahweh says, hey, Moses, put your stick in the water, waters open up, then they go through on dry ground, and then the enemy is drowned. 
It's like both is a, a part of the salvation experience. We have a tendency to put it like in like so this one point, and it doesn't quite work that way, especially in a Hebrew mind. You've got to see that. Salvation is both about redemption and deliverance. The New Testament is not synonymous with the New Covenant. The New Covenant is actually laid out here most clearly in Jeremiah 31, verse 31. When we read the Gospels, what we're reading is the um, is the uh, the beginning of the new covenant. Yeshua is the Passover lamb. And then the feast cycle days, it starts with Yeshua. And he's the Passover lamb. He dies on the cross for our sins. And that inaugurates the new covenant. That's where the, the, the door frames of our hearts happen, right? But then it's now this process that we're going through. So let me read it. We'll go through this quickly. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new Hadashah, new or renewed, it doesn't matter, new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Now, that's important. It is not with like the church, which I have a video on that. I'll put a card up here. Church is like a, it's a bit of a misnomer. It's like, I don't think people get it. It's just God's assembly. It always has been that way, always will be that way. Those who are really committed to Yahweh. But Yahweh, he, he picks out this nation to show them how to be in covenant relationship with them, but they, they fail miserably. But Yahweh's always had this relationship with Israel and Judah, but it's really one and the same. And in Romans 9, 10, 11, anyone can be grafted in. Ruth is grafted in, we can be grafted in. So he's going to make a covenant with Israel and Judah, verse 32. It will not be like the covenant which I made with their fathers in the day I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. So we know that the new covenant is juxtaposed to the Sinaitic or the Mosaic covenant. My covenant, which they broke, which they did, they did it with the golden calf and they continued to do it thereafter. And they kept doing it. Although I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. A husband? Yeah, he's trying to marry them. We've heard of this whole Bride of the Christ thing. Yahweh sought there at Sinai to betroth them, to enter into that kind of relationship. Now, it hasn't consummated yet. It's like Mary and, and Joseph. They were legally bound, legally married. Um, you might call it husband, wife, but it's not quite all the way there yet. That's what's happening. Verse 33. But this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel, after those days, declares the Lord, I will put my law, my Torah, or Torah, within them, and on their heart I will write it, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. So that's going to be coming still. It started to the degree that your heart actually is circumcised, that you have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, which you have. You know, that's the starting point. But now you're in the process of being delivered, okay? It's like kind of like Pharaoh and his army still after you. But at some point, those seas are going to open up. They will not teach again each man his neighbor and each man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin. I will remember no more. Here's what we know is that when you accept Yeshua as Savior, that your sins are forgiven. But if you haven't noticed, sin still kind of creeps up in your life. And it just you just need to know that the Holy Spirit is at work in you and will continue that work until the day of completion. It's inaugurated, but it hasn't come to fruition. Now, after Yeshua returns, there's going to come a time where we won't have to teach anyone how to follow the Torah. And Torah just means, by the way, the loving and instruction of a father to a child. That's it, okay? It's that simple. And so we teach that now. I have to. I'm like a, a shepherd person, and I'm like teaching the flock and feeding the flock. You know, here's how you follow Yahweh. But I won't have to teach people one day. It's all going to be written on people's hearts. Now, when the Hebrew writer, in, at least in the Greek, the way that it looks a little bit in uh, Hebrews Eight, at the end of verse 9, it's just uh, the Hebrew writers recounting what Jeremiah had already prophesied. 
But it phrases it a little bit different, I think is helpful. For they did not continue in my covenant, and I did not care for them, says the Lord. Now, you gotta remember, Yahweh doesn't enter into bad covenants. The vows at Sinai were perfect. Yahweh, the husband, was perfect. Israel, the wife, not perfect. There's a problem here. It's not here, and it's not with Yahweh. It was with the people. In fact, you can see that in chapter 8, verse 8. The problem or the fault was with them. Here's the new covenant. Yahweh sent his son Yeshua as the Passover lamb to die on the cross and then to begin writing by the Spirit his Torah on your heart. We are powerless. If we don't have Jesus and we try to do good by doing the Torah, it's the letter of the law. But you, everyone knows when you look in a woman's eye, sorry, I know that might be, sound weird. You look in a woman's eyes, I know when she's in love with that man. There's something in her heart and we can feel it. She wants to. I see that. I have my future daughter-in-law, Megan. Oh, she loves my son, Keith. I can tell. It's like, it's not that she's just in love with being a, you know, a bride and a wife, you know, because, you know, girls fantasize about such things. She's actually in love with him. You can tell it. I'm like that with Amy. And that's what's happening with the new covenant. In his blood, then the spirit is deposited in you, is writing. It's like your heart has been circumcised. And here's the truth. I, t I kid you not. You can't stop me from wanting to follow my father's instruction, my husband's instruction. You can't stop me. It's being written on my heart. I am compelled by the spirit. So the new covenant is still. It is because of his blood, but it's still the same terms. It all glorifies Jesus. It all teaches how, us how to walk in life. And then we have the perfect husband, but now we are being perfected by the Spirit. And one day, we'll be completely unified with our Father in heaven. And we'll be doing that law. And I'm gonna end with this. Yeshua is gonna return one day. And there's gonna be some imposters, some antichrists. And I want to tell you what I think is going to determine, because be people that fall away, they're gonna be deceived. Here's how you're gonna know if it's the real deal Yeshua. The real Yeshua is going to obey his father's commandments. The real Yeshua is going to promote his father's commandments, the Torah is going to go through those feast days, invite you into that narrative that glorifies Jesus. That's the point of all that. So don't be deceived. I want you to know what to look for. You look for a son that follows his father. Yeah, that's all new covenant stuff. All right, I'll see you next week.